Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Amanda and I have been working together for the last 10 years on solving what we think is the most important problem of our times, of any times, how the effects of childhood trauma have lifelong impacts on our health, on our well-being, on our schooling, on our relationships. But most importantly, what can we do about it in our own lives? And what can we do to break that cycle that may have existed in our families for generations? So we're going to get comfortable. We're going to sit, if you don't mind, like you are, and talk for a while. Okay. Well, first, I want to just start by saying that Jennifer and I have been friends and colleagues for 10 years now. And we really complement each other in a variety of different ways. We're both professors. We're both developmental psychologists. We're both parents. And we both really have come at this from a perspective of looking at trajectories and change over time. And when I first met Jennifer and she told me about the ACES study, uh, well, my first reaction was, how did I not know her before? I felt like we had this immediate connection. And we really realized that we wanted to bring together the developmental literature, the science of resilience, parenting, family, and then also the science around adversity and the way that adversity affects the body and the brain. More importantly, we recognized when we were doing programs with other people, with other families, that something, something just wasn't right. So about 15 years ago, I was running a program called the Tulsa Children's Project. It was a $5 million program designed to help families of low income experience whose children were enrolled in a Head Start kind of program and we thought, you know, if, if we just marshal some resources, maybe we can break the cycle of poverty. And we worked on this project for about three years. And the parents were so fabulous. They did everything they had the opportunity to do. They took classes. They learned. We had three years of, of young mothers, mostly, going back to school to become certified nurse assistants. And 100% of them in the first two years not only graduated from the program at Tulsa Community College, but they passed the test. They became certified nurse assistants. And then they wanted to go on to become licensed practical nurses. Great. We had the money. We had the grant. We'll pay for this. And instead of 100% success, now we have 20 percent success because it's hard because the math and science classes are hard because the schedule is hard because their lives are hard and we thought we're traumatizing them again they're failing because we are making them or giving them an opportunity to do things that are just beyond their grasp they would tell us I can't do this. I try. I learn. I study. I read. And we knew they were because we had tutors. We had classes. We had life skills courses. I can't remember what I read. I can't. I just can't. And so we began trying to understand what was holding them. It's like a wall they would hit. And then we heard about the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. We call Adverse Childhood Experiences ACEs. And it turns out that when children experience extreme neglect or abuse or family dysfunction, it can affect the brain's ability to learn, to remember, to control emotions and behavior, and it can affect health too. And then the grant ended. But then we were able to get money 
to help turn all that we had learned about retraining the brain into how to be a good parent of little kids. And while we were doing this, we were also trying to get other grants, and we got a grant from the National Institutes of Health. We've now gotten $20 million over the last six years to create a whole center around studying the effects of childhood adversity and what we can do about it. And so why we are here today is because we've learned a lot in the past 15 years. We have a lab that's studying the effects of not just ACEs, but protective and compensatory experiences. We call them PACEs that balance and counter the negative effects of ACEs. So we have some very specific tips that we want to share with you because None of us had a perfect childhood. We all want our children to have a perfect childhood. But more importantly, we want our children to overcome adversity that may happen to them in the future. Whether it's a tornado in Oklahoma or an earthquake in California or just the betrayal of a best friend, you know, we will all experience some kind of adversity over the course of our lives. So we've identified some things that we think are very helpful, and we want to share those with you. One of the things that we talked about that's been shown over and over and over again is the importance of unconditional love of a caregiver. So having somebody who always has your back. So that really important relationship with a parent. We also came up with having a best friend or having friends. Um, it looks, these pieces look a little bit different throughout childhood and adolescence. They're also important in adulthood, but the role of friendship. Um, we also talked about having a mentor, the importance of having somebody, especially if your family is struggling and you might have been experiencing abuse and neglect within your family. So having a mentor, somebody outside of your home. So that might be a coach or a teacher, but somebody who's got your back, um, somebody that you can go to. Also volunteering. And so having that experience of helping others, it really brings you outside of yourself into the world to see, you know, what's different? How can I make a difference? And volunteering with a parent is actually really important and powerful for promoting resilience. We also found that belonging, being part of a group. And so that could be just a a Cub Scouts group. It could be being part of a choir or band or theater, but that sense of belonging. So those relationship components of PACES, five of those are also five resources. So on the resource side, these are things that both families and the community can make sure kids have. At the family level, it's important for parents to, no matter what else is going on, to ensure that their basic needs are met. You know, that there's a clean, safe home with enough food. Remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs? You can't get to your very best self if you're hungry. And of course, kids need to make sure that that they aren't hungry. And so basic needs. Second, in the home environment, It's very helpful for children if there are routines and little rituals and predictability. Predictability gives us a sense of safety. If you never know what's going to happen at bedtime, first of all, it's probably an argument every night. I don't want to go to bed. But if you have a routine and you start this when kids are little and you do bath time and you do book time, and then you tell a story, and then you get a drink of water, and then maybe one more drink of water, and then lights out. That's your routine, and it's predictable and makes you feel safe. So those are in the home. A good school or learning environment is really helpful for children, especially when parents are unable to provide stability or um, enriched kinds of it opportunities for learning at home, going to a good school can really make a huge difference. Schools often, but other community organizations also can help give children opportunities to develop hobbies. 
we call this recreation or leisure. And sometimes it feels in our world of work and stress like, well, who has time for leisure, for recreation? But especially for growing children, they need to learn what am I good at? What is fun for me that requires me to practice or or do things over and over again until I get good, but I'm enjoying it so much, I do the work. It might be a chess champion in the making, it might be playing a musical instrument, or it might just be reading and real, uh, or drawing or dancing. But having a hobby is a really powerful way for children to overcome adversity. And finally, physical activity. It might be alone, might be with others as part of a sports group. But physical activity has been found to be more uh, powerful than depression medication for addressing depression. It's also a way to ensure that your brain develops well. We are smarter when we exercise for biological reasons. We create um, chemicals that help cement new new, um, pathways in the brain and and recover uh, cells when we exercise. And it also discharges stress. Amanda likes, you know, to hack the paces. Hack them by stacking them. So if you think about, if you have a best friend and instead of doing something, you know, lazy, like lounging on the couch and playing video games, if you get involved in something physical, whether it's, you know, skateboarding or hiking, then you're getting two paces for the price of one. We talked to somebody today who I think got four or five paces when she got a new dog. And she joined a group around that dog and she goes exercising and she has a best friend that they go walking with the dog. I won't name any names, but I was pretty impressed because that's that's stacking your paces. That's ensuring that your days are filled with activities that not only help you become resilient, but enrich your life. Why, why are paces so po- powerful? We came up with the list after reading all this research about the kids who survived and thrived in spite of adversity. It was just, this is what was in their lives. We started asking ourselves why, and we're still working on this, but we think it's for two reasons. One is that these paces satisfy basic human needs, whether it's for love or stability or for feeling affiliation with other people, feeling belonging. But we also think they help you exercise certain muscles in your character. We don't talk about character development much anymore. I told my son about this recently, and he goes, yes, we do. We talk about it in Boy Scouts. And he said, I was shocked. I thought it was so radical. They had this list of virtues that we're going to be developing in Cub Scouts. And then he thought, well, if I don't help my son develop these, who is going to? But things like bravery, honesty, loyalty, responsibility, kindness, respect, these are character virtues that help us Be resilient, help us be strong when life is hard. And by doing these things, practicing your piano, going to the the Cub Scouts when you'd rather just stay home and, and play video games, doing things to help others, feeding the dog, keep putting away your clutter if you're three years old, putting away your toys at the end, all of these things build character. They build self-control, self-discipline. So paces, we think, are the antidote to aces because they both satisfy our needs that may not be otherwise getting met when we are being abused, neglected, or in a home that isn't functioning very well. But they also help us build our inner strength, what allows us to, to be strong and positive and flexible and resilient in the face of trouble.
Thank you.